Yo, what is going on, people? Welcome to Throw Down Your Questions, episode 462. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and tonight I'm joined by Emilio Lopez. Be all lies, Nobel <laughs> Prize, when a leader speaks, that reflection lies. Adam Ville. Never make eye contact while eating a banana. <laughs> Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. Brett Murdoch. What up, people? And Brian Manjoma. What up, what up? By the way, do you guys ever see that video of how to properly eat a banana so you don't look gay? It's fucking hilarious. Oh, no. <laughs> Have you ever seen the video on how to properly <laughs> open a banana? I, no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> you're, supposed to, you're supposed to peel it from the back end, not the long stem end. Well, okay, I yeah. I've seen I've seen people just break it's it in half. Yeah, and do it. yeah, yeah. you either break it in half. I mean, so so the, yeah, so the, yeah, so the way to properly eat a banana. Let me pull the mic back. So basically, go like this, right? You break off a piece, look around, make sure no one's looking, and then you just throw it in your mouth and just repeat that until it's over. You don't want to put the whole thing in there. <laughs> it's fucking insane, man. No, Yo, I know some no. weird guys Come like on. that. It's like it's like, dude, some of these acts are not gay. You know, <laughs> like it's it's fine. Eating mm-hmm. a sausage doesn't make you gay, okay? Um, I've even uh, known some. Eating, I, eating I, I, so, there, there's some guys that's off serving know. ice creams. Yeah, uh, well, there's some guys from uh, ice yeah. cream calm. They won't do that either. Oh, with ice cream. <laughs> there's yeah, a certain, you know, like, there's a certain individual that was on a former, um, you know, Torrance podcast. I'll say that he um, he says if you wipe more than twice, you're you're having you're doing it for pleasure, and you got to be careful. It's like. Okay, bro. Well, th- there was, okay. was, was uh, uh, that, family that, guy. That person, that person was very, uh, you know, sensitive was, when it he came to. He uh, also didn't believe in eating bananas or anything phallic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember in Family Guy, there was something like that. The guy went to the bathroom and he was taking too long. He's like, "Hey, if you shake it two times, you're playing with it. Get out. Keep yeah, going." Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to, if you want to look gay, you eat a banana. You just break off pieces, make mm. sure no one's looking. Then you throw the piece in your mouth. It's fucking insane! Oh man! Oh boy! Kid Shaq, what's going on, brother? He goes. Sounds like people have fragile egos, or they're just ignorant. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Fucking hilarious to me, man. Anyway, questions tonight, man. Let's get to it. Uh, Kid Shaq, you're up first, sir. We're answering your questions first, man. Uh, because your questions are uh, relevant to what happened over the weekend, man. Um, obviously, uh, Black Friday, right, uh, was going on. We got a question about that later on. Um, and everybody's looking for this motherfucking place in Portal. Can find it. It was the PS5 all over again, you know. Um, so let's get to the first question here. Uh, with how well the PS Portal is doing so far, it fascinates me how particularly angry some are getting over people enjoying the product and that it's selling well. Is it weird slash funny how worked up people are getting at the success of the portal? I, um, I think it's more yeah. of uh, on how limited the portal is. That's what's baffling. We see all these devices, other handhelds and stuff that have all these, this functionality. Hell, even they even said it, it's like the best experience we saw with Digital Foundry said it's with an iPad. You, know, you get the the better experience and you can connect your controller and the whole thing. It looks better, runs better, bigger screen. But yet people are flocking to this device that can't do anything besides project the image from the game within the home. It's, yeah. uh, why? So why are about, they going crazy? Let, let's, why let's, are talk, they going, yeah, let's talk about that. We're gonna, Kishak will address your, your question uh, shortly, but we got to give some context here, right? Um, or, or mainly going... What the fuck is this thing, right? Why can't you find it? Um, I'm I've heard many um, you know, like theories and I'm gonna artificial go scarcity. So, yeah, so I'm gonna so I'm gonna combine them because I think many and I were discussing this beforehand, and this is what I think is going on. It's both of them, yeah. Artificial scare well, let's see. Yeah, artificial scarcity, let's just be honest. Artificial scarcity, right? Because Sony probably didn't have a lot of faith in this thing, and then two. Like what happened with the PS5? These motherfucking scalpers are getting in there, and yeah. I, that's not a theory; it's a fact. Like you go to eBay, yeah. you know these guys are selling marked up, and then obviously you know what happens. People are like, "Oh shit, now I want that," you know, because because uh, yeah. it's hard to find, mm-hmm. you know. Because I my personal opinion is that Sony 
toe dip, didn't have a lot of um like faith in this thing. So they're like, all right, just put out a limited amount, whatever, you know. As a matter of fact, to make it, he just says right here, there's no portal in New Zealand until February, so they definitely limited production. I I think that's that's part of it. But obviously limiting production could also be done intentionally, but like, oh, we could drum up more success. So when we actually have more of these I mean, to manufacture, people will just like rush to it. Because like you said, the, Adam, at the, the end of the day, what is this thing? It, it's it, it's just a streaming thing. It's That's not, it. It's, it's just not no anything. different. Yeah. You could get a fucking backbone, you know, for your phone, you know, for less yeah. than this shit. Granted, yeah. yes, yes, I, I understand the arguments. No, you're not going to be getting phone notifications or phone calls on, on your plays and portal. I get that. But still, this is not that you can't play. I, I still believe I, I said this before, right? Um, I to my team at, at, at Tom's Guide, I half joked, half seriously said I should write a PSA article because I think half the people buying the shit think it's a fucking PS a Vita too. You know, I don't think they know that this is just a streaming thing that you need a PS5 that you need to play it in your home. Like, I don't think people go, understand that. Yeah, you know, you go on Reddit and there were I've seen comments whether they were trolling the group or not. They're like, no, no, you can load your own PS5 if you own it, you can load it on there. It's like, no, there is no loading. Yeah, on there. You what the fuck are they talking about? You, because they were like, yeah, I signed in with my profile. Yeah, you signed in with your profile, and that way you can see your device, your PlayStation house, but it's not installing anything. There is no storage space for that. Doesn't it the, lack the, like basic Bluetooth features? Like it's yes, something missing. It's yeah. like, what the fuck? You know? And then you need you, you you can't just connect any old headphones to it. You gotta connect these Sony headphones, the new ones that just came out. Yeah, you, you know, gotta get the special yeah, ones. But, but at the same time, I, I have seen what Kishak's talking about, where people who bought it like it some people who genuinely like it because think about like this right if you're at home and you know your kid want you know you're watching tv and your fucking kid wants to play playstation like here play on this i'm, I'm watching my fucking tv or whatever i get that so so some people are enjoying yeah. it but then those people are getting dunked on by other people saying what the fuck is wrong with you you just wasted your you money. know what i don't i don't buy that <laughs> i don't know? buy that because that didn't work for nintendo with the wii u because they were selling that same idea right there yeah. Yeah, just play this in your hand while somebody else is playing on the TV, and it didn't work. I think what it oh, is no, is these ma- people for mass spread. It doesn't, but I'm saying there are yeah. some people that that does work for them. You know, well, I mean, I, I the, Wii, people, the Wii U, yeah. the Wii U is a is a standalone console. This is an accessory yeah, to a accessory, mega popular, yeah. um, mega popular uh, uh, platform. Yeah, but yeah, no. Regardless, people are. But people, no, you still needed the console like connected. The console, Remember yeah. that the the controller in order to play that. You still needed the console. You couldn't take that controller with the screen outside. It was still in the house. It's a second screen experience type of thing. Like, oh, someone's using the TV. Let them use the TV. You could still play your Wii U sitting yeah, yeah. next to them. That's what I'm getting at. And um, nobody cared. They were like, that's dumb. Why would I want to do that? And I was like, well, look now with the portals. That's exactly what they're offering. And people are all hyped on it. So what they did was, one, they're already fans of the product or the company or whatever. And they're like, hey, I'm all in it. Two, you already bought it. You paid 300 bucks. You don't feel it hurt your wallet. And it's like, ah, I might use it once in a while, but whatever. You know, I, I, I'm not going to knock it. Honestly, I don't know why there's so much hoopla over this device. It's a niche device. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why. It's taking, I guess, because there's nothing to talk about at the moment. But you know, there's there's really there's really nothing more to say. It's like it's it's a streaming device for for you know for a console, and that's it. That's all it serves. That's a, that's the whole purpose. And you know, some people are gonna buy it because uh, you know they actually like Tony mentioned. There's people who you know have kids and stuff, and they take their TVs and stuff. And there's you know PS fanboys will buy anything that Sony releases. Um, but other than that, it, you know, I, I don't know. There's there really, there really sh- shouldn't be that much talk about something so in- insignificant. I find it interesting how the PlayStation Go failed, right? Because you can, yeah. you can, you can use your UMDs. And now this shit, this is a fucking streaming device. It's selling. Uh, it's so a different loud. time, you know. Very interesting. Time. Very interesting how that works. I, I remember people goofing on me when I had a, a QWERTY keyboard on my phone, and they're <laughs> like, "Why do you have that?" I was like, "Well, I can text people. Why would you do that, asshole? You can call them. You know, like they didn't understand it. And now look, everybody texts. Things yeah. have changed. Some people Things prefer to text, you know, yeah. or talk. Um, 
Blitz says, if it wasn't such a, quote, dumb device and actually had some kind of additional hardware or features, then I'd probably consider it. But given it's literally a dual sense with a screen, it's a huge fuck off for me. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. with that, yeah. you know? Um, so I, I really think that a lot... Okay, listen, I it doesn't even, listen, I understand that some people genuinely like it. I'm not trying. I'm not going to be like those haters who are dunking on them. But at the same time, I think some of these people are getting hoodwinked, man. I don't yeah. think they know what this thing is. You know? If anything, if we want to look on the upside, if this does sell well, maybe this will encourage PlayStation for the second uh, iteration to actually have some other features. Maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, throw in an SSD and let you install the games and play it on the go if you own them. It won't really do a lot of of other things maybe they, they you know they toe dip like they usually do it does a little bit more than what this one does who knows maybe maybe that that'll open the door because if it does sell well they're like oh look we can make some money and or maybe they won't do shit and they just keep producing this i don't know but it, it could be it's only good for sony right yeah either way yeah. people buying it any other thoughts on the place in portal we do have another question related to it though Yo, man, I um something tangentially related. Uh, I I took my like you guys know I took my iPad to New York, played Spider Man, uh, took a Dual Sense and uh, got a platinum on it. Hey, played, hey. played really good. Played Spider Man in New York, super meta. Yo, man, that's just that's mm -hmm. the most meta you can get, man. And Shit. It, it's a great experience. So you don't even need a port if you already have an iPad. And my iPad's not that new. It's you know twenty. I think it was like 2019, 2020. Um and you can you can play a remote play pretty pretty good on that. So you already have an iPad. I don't see that much of a need of. I, I did that with my Vita playing the Division while I was in New York in 2018 to my PS4, and it worked. So I mean it, that's what I'm saying. The technology has been there and proven to work. Why do we need this proprietary screen with uh, attached controls? It's dumb. You can already do it with other devices. Yeah. Again, Razor Backbone. You know. Um, not the razor back, but razor kishi. That's another one. Um, go ahead. Um, to be fair, talking. I, I actually think that Sony did a really smart move with with this. I mean, if 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 you actually look at it, Sony released a handheld device that will succeed without them having to even support it this time. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, there you go. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's the that's the toe dip of all. I can't the, fail the because unless your PS Five fails, it was a toe dip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what? That, that's actually a great segue to the next question, because, again, it's related. Um, given the widespread sellout of the PS Portal, there's a prevalent belief that PlayStation enthusiasts are expressing a demand for a dedicated handheld console. However, the challenge lies in the finite <laughs> number of studios Sony possesses to create exclusive software. Introducing another device would necessitate the development of exclusive games for the PS5, PSVR 2, and a handheld, stretching resources thin. Uh, criticisms has already arisen this year regarding the lack of a clear roadmap for PlayStation's future beyond 2023, coupled with the recent departure from cross-gen support. Do you think adding another device into the mix raises concerns about the potential negative impact on the success of a dedicated mm -hmm. handheld and the potential hindrance it could pose the PS5 throughout its generational lifespan. Again, this is why I think this is just a streaming device. They're testing the waters. You know, they don't want to dedicate. This is a, you know, this is a great question because I think the the era of dedicated handheld systems uh, is is over unless it's a mobile device. Yeah. Um, you know, the Switch, the Switch being uh, ahead of the curve. They they did a device that's not just portable, not just a. You know, in the home, it's it's a it's a hybrid, and you know, after that, we have all of these uh, Steam decks, these uh, the, the, everything that Tony's been reviewing, all these different devices that essentially is just console games or new games that come out on a, on a mobile device. And I don't think Sony and Sony's track record is not good. You know, especially with the Vita supporting uh, dedicated software for the for the mobile platforms or for their handheld platforms. Uh, so I think the 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 well, what's supposed to go next is you know same games that are on the console are going to have to be in the mobile. Microsoft is going to do it. They're going to do it via streaming probably. Um, or well, but that see that's that's been the holy grail for like twenty years. Like because the problem's always been you know they want to put 
the a good experience on both of them, but like, how do you do that without downgrading your mobile version? It's not until streaming has actually come into actual feasibility that it's starting to become an option. So, as much as I want to poo-poo Sony's oper- you know, chance to throw out a a, a Vita, because like we, I don't know if I, I dare to wish for that again. I don't, I don't even think I do. I, don't, I you know, at this point I've had my Steam Deck. I, I don't think it can compete, but like it's becoming a possibility. Well, I, well, Brett, that, that, yeah, I, just, I just wanted to throw that. It's just, it's just kind of now becoming possible. Well, here's, here's a question for the panel. It's like, does anyone believe that Sony will ever make a dedicated handheld device? And, I don't and think so. Software. For, they don't need to handheld device. They, look, they, if these are selling like hotcakes, it's, it's, it looks like then they, this is it. They don't need to. And how much did this actually cost? What you see is what you get. It's a screen with damn controls on it. That's it. And that's enough. The software on it is the same software that you get from the, the main remote app. So so Adam, the- it would be smart, Adam. Like you, you have to admit like creating like, this, that would be their opportunity to create an ecosystem that reaches outside of just their core console experience. It would cost them money, and no, they I'm, don't want to do that. They, I don't think that they can do it. I'll be honest. Like, I, don't, I don't think they can do it competently, and I don't think that they have any interest in doing it. That being said, I think it would be a fantastic idea. It would allow them to kind of reach out of their own little arena and kind of future-proof them, because that's what everybody's kind of doing. It's It's... If you if you're kind of dealing with Steam and what Microsoft is doing, then then kind of creating an ecosystem slash service for yourself wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. But they are really just chaining themselves to just that console experience. And I I don't know. Like if you would have asked me ten years ago, I would have been like, "Fuck yeah, that's how I want it. I want that pure shit. Do not fuck around with any of that stuff." But like now. I don't know. I, I yeah. kind of feel like that may be limiting them in the future. You know what I mean? I, I think they're, they're taking that other approach, what we see with their launcher that they plan on de- de- releasing for the PC, and they got all their games coming to PC. It's older titles, but they're still pushing it, because then it goes on all those other devices. They don't have to create a device. They're like, hey, you could play all these games. We'll get the money from them, and we don't have to do any of the work. We just have to make sure it works on the PC. Let you guys deal with all the other ish- issues. So, there you go. I, I think they're just going to do that. They're just going to keep pushing their games on PC to, to make the extra money. See, that's such a weird take for Sony, though, because generally Sony is, they want to keep everything kind of under lock and keep it. So, it, it to me, it seems weird that in this space they wouldn't want their own dedicated hardware that they could lock their software onto, and instead they're just like, well, well they're going to open the floodgate to the third party here, like, that's kind of. I'm not arguing with you. I'm just saying it's weird because that's the complete opposite of their normal mo. But that's what they've been doing for years now, with God of War and all these Last of Us. They don't. They've been putting it on PC. They put it on Epic and Steam. They're like, here, there's other platforms. Go ahead, play it. Am I late, Nick? Yeah, they don't care. Yeah, they but like, make yeah, like significantly afterwards, like I can I can also see them being like, look, here's a here's a Vita, you know. Nova or some other yeah, random like, fucking name. But they, and the, it, it, it comes out with games that you could stream day and date if you already own them on the PlayStation mm-hmm. console. Later on, yeah. we'll do the whole PC thing and you can just do whatever the fuck you want there. But. but whatever they come up with has to be able to play these games, these PS5 type games. And that's what people are going to want. If they're going to buy something else besides this $300 remote device, they're going to be like, oh, you got a PlayStation uh, handheld? Don't half-ass it like the, the PSP and the Vita and get like downgraded versions. We want one-for-one one comparison. I want that if I buy my PS5 game, I also get that same game to work on this new handheld. That's a big but, ask. But it, no, here's, the thing. here's the thing. It's all how you frame it. If you say, hey, here is a game... Like, let's let's call this the the Uber Vita, right? Like, here's an Uber Vita. Uber Vita plays its own Uber Vita games, plus it does the streaming that this other thing does. Mm. So not only can you play Uber Vita games, you can take your PlayStation Five games with you anywhere. Asterisk. Mm. No, that's a Vita now. Because my Vita now could do all that. You could still stream, and no, no, it's not going to work. People don't want another skew. 
They just want to have one to play on all the devices. No one wants to double dip. It's like, they think about it. Let's say if you get, I don't know, they, they make another God of War. And it's like, oh, that's great. And then it's like, oh, am I getting it for my new Vita thingy? Yeah. Well, you're getting something like that. What do you mean something like that? It's going to be, eh, we took some of the no, stuff no, out no, we it, had. No, no, it's not that. Like, they don't even sell a, a God of War for Uber Vita. They just sell the God of War for PlayStation 5 and let you stream it through the Uber Vita. They, they never make that any of those promises, so they can't break any of those promises. Um, now, what they may give you is a side uh, Atreus God of War game exclusive to the Uber Vita for the first year until it comes out on PC. Uh, but that, but that then, would be kind uh, of their MO. But then they get smacked in the face a year later when that version comes to PC and works on Steam Deck and then, you know, the, the Legion Go and all the other ones. And I'm like, shit, I can't do that online. That's online. what's happening now, though. That's the, they, they, no, they're already on it, it, though. They're all on there. So you could play them. It's just you're not paying for another weird version of the game. You're getting the official version. You're not getting the ones on PC. Is not a downgraded version. You're getting I, Miles I think, Morales. I, yeah, Adam, I, I think you're missing. I've never, I never at, at once in this point said like they're selling you a downgraded version, right? No, like, you said like, that the the other version of Vita would have a different type of God of War game. No, no, I said the one that was on you it. You could, you could get a different one. But they're not selling you a downgraded regular God of War because they're not trying to sell you a, a specific God of War for the most part. They're trying to sell you on the fact that you can stream this God of War, plus it has its own games. Yeah, that's the Vita. The Vita did that with its own version of Uncharted that didn't come for the other one, and still people didn't buy it. Yeah, but you couldn't... You could not You could, you could stream the like, PS4 at the time. Yeah, you could stream it. It didn't, it didn't work for shit. I just told you I did for the division playing in New York. I still did it. I streamed it. It worked. It did work. And Manny was always doing the streaming, the remote play on his. That's video. that is true. That's yeah, true. I was I was doing it. Yeah, I was doing it a lot with uh, the like playing like Bloodborne and stuff like that. The only thing is, it it, it really all it, the the remote play in general is really dependent on how good your connection is. And this is any anybody running it. Like right now, I have my. My PlayStation 4 is able to run my PlayStation 5, and I tested it out. Now, my PlayStation 5 is currently, you know, um, wired, and then my PlayStation 4, being that it's in my room... I can't you know, believe Manny just room, said... Hey, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, Manny, you just fucked me up. You just fucked me up. You just but, said my PS5. You has got to absorb that. I never thought I'd hear that. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so my PS5 is connected to the Crazy. wire, and then the, the, the 4... Uh, the four is connected in the room and it's using the it's using wireless. Now the wire like ran remote play with Spider Man and there's a whole bunch of lag. Video got all messy. It, it, you know, it just had a lot of issues. So you know, again, it just depends on your connection. Well, that that'll apply even for this new portal thing. It's all about yeah. you know if you have it's walls, all- you're playing in a basement or something. Yeah, from the router. Yeah. From- mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, to answer your question, I, I don't think so. I, I think this is it. They're just doing the toe dips. I don't think they're going to do a dedicated handheld. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't think they're going to invest in it. I mean, either than like they already the, the. I feel like the replacement of that of that additional device is the is a VR. And, so the and VR that isn't is doing a, that is well a, either. You know, not doing that well. Either. Oh, that did come out. Right? This question. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Also uh, sold out, by the way, as well. By the way, when it you know initially, mm-hmm. yeah. So. Yeah, initially sold out. So I feel like those numbers that we're talking, you know, like a lot of people, like, oh my god, it's so. Don't don't worry about those. Yeah, it's, I Brett, think what's up? They just, yeah. I, yeah. I, I also want to, I want to ask not just will they, but should they? Because we all we all know that they'll, you know, what they do and what they should do often different things. It's frustrating, frustratingly so with Sony sometimes. So like, yeah, I want to know like. I know what they're, they're probably not going to, but I'm curious as to whether you guys think they should at this point. I, I wouldn't no, want I don't, another I don't proprietary think, I don't think device. They need to. I don't think they need to. No. no. Just play nights with the other ones. That's all. Yeah, like, games like, on the other Adam shit, said, their, a lot. their games are already on the Steam Deck, so you know they're good on that end. So, no, they don't need to. Yeah, they don't need to. So what was the point of this end then? A toe dip. <laughs> I don't fucking know. This shit makes no fun. This it's thing just, makes no sense to me. You know? I, when, I, I, I really think somebody said it. Like, it we, what happened, Adam? 
Remember, we talked about when it was first announced. We're like, who is this for? Yeah. <laughs> what? Who wants this? I who think some Sony executive just said, hey, screen that, that Steam Deck's doing well. Can we do something like it to try to see? Like, But again, I, I don't know. It's like Adam said, who is this ultimately for? Really? Like, I don't so know. Low? So it's for the people that are buying it till it's for, out of style. For ponies, <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know? Again, we'll see when and they get re- a, when restocks and, come in, and, and if it and sells out again, ul- you know. Also, also, ultimately, right? If they don't, if they, you know, you sort of touched on this before. If they decide to discontinue this thing, no harm, no foul. No harm, yeah, no one cares. There's it no, doesn't matter. Yeah, there's no, there's no soft. There's no, there's no games that are getting lost. There's no software that's being made. It's not a big it. financial loss, I'm sure. Not a big financial loss, Dip. which, which. Mm-hmm. So toe dip, uh, if if the in any sense of the word, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Let's move on. Good questions. Um, now, who is this guy? Eurocar nine. Who is this? And I think he may have. So wait, so wait, and I, so wait. And I think there's, this guy has there, inf- so there, information here. Oh, I think so. Is there? Is there? So wait a minute. Is there? So if, the, if this is Eurocar nine. That means there's, there's there's another eight of them. Well, of course, so there wait, were that we've brought up. At, yeah, at, at the there very least, the get... man caught up with them. Oh boy, yeah. no, well, he tried maybe, to get one, two, and three, and they the kept first, saying that the first successful prototype. There were eight of them before, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah but this question right here, I think this guy has some insider information. I don't know who this guy is. You know, that's why um, I'm saying I think the first eight of them got silenced for leaking information. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the question is, can we have updated thoughts on Adam's experience with the new Steam Deck, a.k.a. Enzo? I want to know how this motherfucker knew that, man. He knew that because we, we, uh, we did I Am Negan for the Fear of the Walking Dead. So then we covered the I last two episodes. you did that shit with Carlos, man. Not with Eurocar 9. <laughs> Yo, man, what's up? He's another guy that joins the chat. We yeah. have people that join the chat constantly. Yeah, I, I, oh, is this like, is this like how Batman here. and Bruce Wayne are friends? Uh, yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, from Bruce Wayne. They both work at the same company, that type of deal. Yes, yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, Peter Parker's always taking pictures of Spider Man, you know? They know each other. Yeah. Um, but I, don't yeah. I don't think that's a healthy relationship. No, it honest. isn't. Um, but yeah, Adam, Steam Deck OLED, man, you finally got that shit working. What do you uh, think about it now? Uh, the limited edition, which turns out we found out what limited means, it's oh. timed, it's not limited in quantity. That's why it's still available. I thought it's it was just it was limited. limited in Wi-Fi. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Was no, say right? the same oh, thing. no. But then that's the thing. It's not no. even, and that's it's when. Effect. So I did. So you can check it out over in Coalition. I have the video of all the stuff that I put on there because it has uh, its own limited edition startup screen that comes with it. It's just called OLED, which is weird, and its own keyboard. It looks like a, an orange uh, RGB type of background keyboard. Really cool. Right. And that's one of the things you get once you turn it on, you log in and it's like, hey, we detect what your device is on. You want to redeem this stuff. So really cool. But uh, that Wi-Fi issue, it's it's more of a router thing because it's a 160 hertz. So if anyone's listening that's having issues or heard about it, if you have a Wi-Fi 6 or 6E router, if you're having issues connecting and it's it's random across the board because some people on reddit were like i have a wi-fi 6 it works fine others like myself it was not and this one dude just went and turned on and off almost every feature that's by default on the router he had an asus wi-fi 6 gaming router the same exact one i had and he said hey i unchecked it just as enable 160 hertz he had it was already checked he unchecked it just like everything else saved tried to connect this time it just worked and stayed on no issues problem is and that's why i didn't even put it with my reviews because i don't know how that impacts your home network what you use that's 160 hertz i don't want to recommend go ahead turn this off and then you're like my wife says her computer doesn't work or some shit you know i don't know what it is i haven't noticed any difference in my home with the wi-fi and devices so I, I'm not understanding what what it is. I'm looking up. It's something that some routers have it on by default. I've never turned this option on. If you want to see if you have it, log into your router, go to your 5G Wi-Fi connection section, and you should see an option just says enabled. It already comes checked. It says 160 hertz. Uncheck it. 
and that's it so it's not so much that it's a steam deck if it was a steam deck then yes there's a problem because then it's failing and it's giving error message connect no it didn't seem that it looks like it's just it, it doesn't have i guess the compatibility for that but then not every router has that feature so maybe it's more of uh, valve understanding and, and loading configs to support whatever this 160 mesh is that's causing issues for some I don't know. It's weird. It's very weird. But once I, well, I did on the router, I didn't do anything on the deck. I didn't have to go through any configuration, special settings. I just unchecked that enabled on the router and restart my router. And then the username and password, which I, I always know, and I put in the, the deck, automatically picked up. It just went on the Wi-Fi like nothing happened. So very weird, but it's fast, you know, going on six. So it, it noticed instantly like I was loading Diablo, which is uh, was an 88 gig file or something like that. Pretty big. And that that was flying down. I, I should have took screenshots of that one too. How, how does it how does it run uh, PlayStation? <laughs> right, which 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 PlayStation? Oh, uh, doing doesn't the remote. It run, doesn't it run? Is doesn't it, it run remote play as well? Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't loaded the remote play. You know what? That's a good idea. I'll make a video on that. I'll do the remote play. I'll do a remote play on that. I, I did it on my old one. I had that set up, but I haven't set up on this one. This one I recently just got. Um, this uh, Switch, you know, emulator, Yuzu, I got that. I put some games on there that I usually play, Mario Kart stuff. And, uh, yeah, it, it's great. It's a screen, but then it's an OLED screen. Like, that's the thing. Like, people are like, oh, it's just amazing. It's really amazing. I mean, it's it, there's some changes. We talked about it with the fan and the memory a little faster and all that stuff and the battery. But it's it, visually, it's what you see that usually wows people just like when you go to buy a new tv it's what you see the 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 the, the, the content could be garbage but if the screen is amazing it makes it look better it pops and that's kinda what's like, happening here you kind of like that um uh you know the the uh was it that crazy like uhd stuff that they got going where you know you have to it has to do with like a color profile. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The color profile. Or, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the how the same goes with the HDR. Same thing. It's, it's just That's config what I mean, files. HDR, sorry. Yeah, the HDR. Same thing with that. Like, if you enable that, some people like, I hate it because it makes things dark, dark, and it makes things white, white, and it keeps it gray. If you ever disable HDR, you'll notice the whole movie film, everything is brighter naturally. And it's because of the way it's designed. I know some some outlets do it well, and then if anybody ever put HDR playing uh, Star Wars, Star Wars, uh, Jedi Fallen Order, no, it's garbage. You have to disable it. it doesn't matter on the PlayStation or any. I had it on PlayStation, it was horrible. Turned it off. Had it on PC. Did the same thing. I'm like, God damn, it's not just a PlayStation. It's just a fucking game doesn't know how to do HDR. But then you play like a Forza or something, and it looks amazing. It works. But with the console, by default, you have to have HDR. There's not like individual game oh you want this HDR? turn it on turn it off no it has to be across the board and, and that sucks it's the same for the the series x and the ps5 but uh anyway anyway the the, the screen looks great uh, i've been playing some you know, i played like some of the older games i put some old nintendo games marble madness and stuff like that and that even worked out great because they also do the saturation and, and all the different levels and then it's just an oled oled is just an amazing screen with all the color that it supports um, I played with the 90 refresh rate, uh, it hurts for fresh rate in some of the games. That looks great. Played some Tony Hawk, looks great. Tony Hawk always looks great. And again, is it really performing different? No, because the, the innards are pretty much the same. And besides, like I said, the memory that's the only thing that can really impact, and that's not going to be too much of an impact. That's just pumping out through the, the threads a little faster, but. It's not like changing out the GPU or the CPU or anything. It just looks better. The lighting looks better. Everything pops more. Uh, reflections look better. And that, and then also the font looks crisper. That's one thing I definitely noticed as somebody with vision issues and reading. It's like, wow, everything just, the text just, it's more clear and bolder for some reason. And I was like, oh, this is great, especially playing games that uh, like or Diablo or anything that you have to read a lot for your, your specs and your outfits and, and your supplies and all that stuff. And I was like, oh, this is, this is a lot. Oh, this this is great. And and it, even though it's a little bit larger, the 7.4, the lack of a bezel is very noticeable. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time in front of my Steam Deck. So once I turned it on, it's like it, it looked it looked bigger than what it was. Hmm. We didn't know because it's brighter and, and it, with that extra space, I'm not seeing the bezel, just looking to the left and right and seeing in my fingers when usually there was like that big black 
bar, yeah. you know, for the bezel. It's like, holy shit. Like, like my, my daughter instantly, like, there was no hiding it. She walked by and she looked at it and she's like, is that a new Hugo? Is that, is that a new, new Hugo? Hugo? Like, <laughs> is that a new Hugo? Like, that's what she said. Like, it's, it's, and she didn't even touch it. It's just that noticeable. Adam's like, no, baby girl, this is Enzo. <laughs> this is Enzo, right? You know, and, and that's it. So I I do enjoy it. I'm still spending time with it. I, there's a few other things I want to test out, but I mean I, I'm not expecting it to fall apart. Or I mean it's the same exact thing. I'm not expecting wonders. It's not going to do something magical. Like I'm trying to think of games that don't play. But then some of the games that, that don't play, it's not because of the limitations of Steam Deck. It's more of compatibility because of launchers. Like Burnout Paradise. We love Burn- Burnout Paradise, right? Um, I would have loved to try the 90 hertz with uh, the remastered, which supports the 60 and above on PC, but that doesn't work on the Steam Deck. Something's up with the launcher. So the launcher is hindering it from it to work, which sucks because that's a game I really would have liked to see that run on there. I could play the other one, the the, the old burned out there, deluxe, whatever that works. But for some reason, the, uh, the new one does not. And it has something to do with the launcher and, and getting hiccups, but... Overall, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I like it. Uh, I, I said it in my review, do you need one? No, you don't need one. Yeah, you, you don't need one. But if you're a heavy user of it, you like it. You, you want the best experience of it, and you're big on screens, and this is definitely a beautiful screen, then, then go for it. You know, if you if you want, and that's when I looked in about the limited. I'm like, what's going on here? Why is it still there? Is there a problem? Is it a glitch? And a buddy told me that it's all. Oh, it wasn't working. I tried doing it when I go to check out. It turns out that it's blocking PayPal. And if you use PayPal, there's some issues with it. And I guess that's how they they block the bots because bots were using well, PayPal. Well, here's the thing. Um, PayPal has um has sort of switched around the way, the way it works these days. So it's probably a, that's a probably a universal thing. PayPal doesn't automatically um, deduct um, money from like if you don't have money in your account, it doesn't automatically deduct it from your account anymore. Uh, so maybe that was it. So that's why it's coming up with the the issue is through because of PayPal. But then it's like I purchased games and stuff through PayPal. I had no issue. So I don't I don't know why it was doing that for this. But yeah, anyway, so if you're using PayPal, you have to specifically if you're uh, if you're now if you have the options, you have to specifically choose to take them have it take the money directly from your bank account instead of it hitting your PayPal and then deducting it from there. Then what's the point of using PayPal? The whole point of PayPal no, there's is two to ways. not be a there's direct. Like, no, yeah, there's two ways. Like in other words, you take money and you put it into your PayPal, or you do a direct. In other words, it does a direct deposit from your from your uh, from your account. And, the, so I, I get it because well, what's weird is because I have PayPal, but I have PayPal credit on there because it has like its own credit system. Right? And the whole point of me using it and why I always use it is because I hate going to websites and having to give my personal banking information or put my credit card information. Oh, do you want to save your stuff? No, I don't. But I know you're going to save it anyway without my permission. So whenever there's a PayPal option, I love doing that because it's like a middleman. It's like you're dealing with PayPal. And PayPal has my private information, but you don't. And that's why I always used it. But if it's going to cause these issues... It's limiting the functionality, and I was like, no, then I don't want to use it anymore. But apparently, that the whole point is that that was what's causing it, because if you don't use it, then you can get it right away with no issues. And when I looked into it more, that's when there's like, well, we're hearing that Valve is saying that it's limited time, not li- limited quantity. So I guess once the holiday is over or whatever, it'll be gone. And then uh, next season, you will get another limited edition, and it'll look completely different. But it'll still be of this build because they said that they want to keep this going for at least two years. Yeah, but yeah, Steam Deck OLED is the truth. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Um, Eurocar also. See, I, I'm questioning whether this guy's a real fan of Throwdown or not. This question is kind of silly. Oh. Will Throwdown be streaming? Oh. Will ga- Throwdown be streaming the Game Awards live this year? Well, considering we've done it for like the entire existence of this podcast, I think it's a pretty safe bet that we will, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, December 7th, we will do our usual um, 
live uh, roast of the game awards. That's what it really yeah. is. All the throw down, throw down, roast the game awards. Yeah. Also join to, us. Yeah. Also to that end, uh, this Thursday's episode of Throwdown will be the last regular episode of the year because after that will be the Game Awards um, stream. And then after that will be the Game of the Year special. Or, uh, yeah, the Throwdown End of the Year special where we go over all the shit that happened in gaming this year. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. And obviously we'll do an AMA as well for the last real last episode of the year, you know. <laughs> so stay tuned, man. All right, let's move on here. Um, kind of related to all this handheld stuff. Um, Alpha Chut, all right. Uh, the release of both the original and OLED Steam decks have went relatively smoothly, and Valve implemented various measures to limit uh, bot and scalper activity. Are there any examples of other companies being as good as Valve, or is it the exception? Sony with the PlayStation, where they did that line system. Remember, they sent out those vouchers. Yeah, the but, for the PS5? but there was a lot of scalpers that got that fucking system. You know, uh, but but uh, but they, I don't know if but if they just sent. All right, let's say if they just sent anyone that had like with holding with Valve is, if you purchase something within X amount of time, then it meant it was an active account. If Sony would have did that, because I think they only sent the email out to certain people, right? That was the whole thing. Certain whales, whatever. I got one. Some people got them. Others didn't get it. But if they sent it to everybody who was an active that had purchased a game or something, it makes things a lot easier because it's like, hey, report to this link at this date at this time, and we'll put you in the queue, and then it'll just refresh for you. You don't have to do anything and say check out. Add item to cart and check out. If they did it that way and it was organized for everybody that that has a PlayStation account that has something active that made the purchase that qualify, that would be smooth sailing. Yeah, the problem is they didn't do that, you know. No, well, but they did some them. of it. They they can go for next step further. But yeah, yeah but nobody's asking has any but any company done it so far. Um, no, or is Valve the exception? It seems no. like Valve's the so exception. Far. So you far, know? yeah. Valve is the exception. I mean, the thing about it, it's like they. It's a, it's an interesting, it's a good way to move for essentially to, pr to prove that the people that have them out there, or at least the people that have put them out and bought them are pretty much people who are active members of the, the thing. Yeah, I think that so was the only one that actually got eBay to delist um, pre-orders. So people had did pre-orders to the accounts and were selling those on eBay. And they pointed out that he's like, no, you can't have these people doing that because they don't own the product. They don't have it yet. And they're asking for full price for people. This is not right. And I guess eBay never paid attention to that. But after that, they pulled them all. So people can no longer sell pre-ordered accounts because they were doing that too. You know, buy something for yeah. 99 cents, then buy this and get the pre-order and then say, hey, give me the full price and then I will send you. But they were marking up the price, obviously. Meanwhile, you could still get the Steam Deck. I mean, that was the thing at the time. Yeah, you would get put in the other tier or whatever next window, but you were still able to get it. They never said, hey, no more this year. Yeah, and remember, they were like, um, if your Steam Deck or Steam account is like, less than six months old you ain't getting this shit because they knew what was going to happen you oh know? yeah people yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. make new accounts and try to buy this thing mm -hmm. oh yeah no they they definitely set an example man they really did um all right moving yeah on. but the thing What's is up? like will a so would a sony or xbox even do that that's interesting you know what i mean yeah i, mean, I don't know granted it steam is a steam and valve is a bit of a unique situation because it's a mostly digital sort of deal yeah you couldn't really do that, especially if there's like retailers and stuff like that are selling it. Yeah. The only place that you can buy the Steam Deck is on Valve's site. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. That was simple. Unless you're in Asia. Apparently, you can go to a store and buy it in Asia. Like they no, they make them. them. They make them over there. They it's make them over there. The right. <laughs> it's all on the streets. Because <laughs> they showed it in like a retail store and everybody was thrilled that they could buy one. I don't remember if we talked about this on on the when Wednesday show, uh, the episode before Thanksgiving. Um, I'll ask the question. I I, I I thought I think we talked about it, but I'm not sure. Um, there um, also from Alpha Chuck, there were stories about Ubisoft accidentally putting full screen ads in game for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Do you believe this was truly an accident or the evolution of a dystopian nightmare? 
Um, regardless of whether we talked about it or not, I call bullshit on that being an accident. You know, bullshit. So wait, what, it was a, I don't. It was a splash screen before the no, game started. No, basically, um, you're playing the game. You're playing the game, and the and the video showed the guy. You know, p- p- opens up the map. But when he opened up the map, you see a ad for whatever the fuck it was showing that for the ad ended back to the game. Yeah, well, and you'll be no. they, made, they made an announcement. They said this was a technical error. This was not intentional. Blah, blah. I'm like, that's an interesting technical error. How the fuck does that yeah. work? You know? Yeah. So Man, I, the, I call shenanigans yeah. on that. It's, they're not, the, they're not the worst offenders when it comes to this. Remember the 2k series 21 and 22 had commercials full on tv commercials in the game during halftime it would pump these like honda ads and all kinds of stuff like what the hell is happening but this is more like a commercial played during the middle of the the match Uh, understand yeah no no i get it but it sounds like it was a still frame it was just it was an actual video commercial if they would like if you go to a map and all of a sudden it says before you see that map check out this new you know you know what but yeah they came out to say it was an accident that was not supposed to happen you know accident how does it no that means why was that even in there in the first place someone programmed it to do that at some point exactly so, so it was an accident that happened earlier. That's what I guess. An accident that got caught. <laughs> yeah, know? it wasn't supposed to happen this soon. Like, yeah. Well, oh. it, it's it's weird. It's like in the, it's like Assassin's Creed Mirage, Black Friday, negative, uh, you know, two point uh, twenty percent. That's weird because especially if you already You're own the game. You're playing the game, and it gives you an ad for the game. Yeah, I it, I mean I don't know if it's a I don't think it's a mis- I don't to be honest. I think it's a mistake that it showed that thing. Oh. I suspect that. Oh, I'm talking suspe- about. I suspect. Okay. I suspect. I, I suspect that it, it that some sort of ad in the game, you know, advertising DLC or whatever, is going to be in the game. You know, I'm I mean? yeah. I'm wondering if they're doing a hub like Call of Duty. Like, for example, the Call of Duty now has this, it's just this Call of Duty and had a little trademark logo. And people like, for the longest, like, when it's launched, people are like, oh, I'm downloading Call of Duty 3. I don't see it anywhere in my queue. No, it's there. It's under Call of Duty, just general. It's a hub. You open that up, and then it puts all your games in there. But it's messed up. Anyway, I have that there. I'm playing Call of Duty 3, but at the top, it's still an ad for Call of Duty 3, Modern Warfare 3. I'm in Modern Warfare 3. But I'm linked through this hub, so it doesn't really know. I guess it's not detecting that I have Modern Warfare 3. But there's there's other people that are on Modern Warfare 2, and they'll see it. But it's still annoying that every time I boot up, I am greeted with this, oh, did you know Modern Warfare 3 is now available? I'm like, yeah, I'm in it now. But no, because they're messed together. So maybe that's what they plan on doing. Have a hub for Mirage, Valhalla, you know, all the other Assassin's Creed and stuff. Like a home base. Remember when we had that for Halo? You guys remember any of the Halo, Halo, Halo Waypoint or whatever it was called? And it was the same thing. It had all the games listed. They keep track of all your activity across all of them. So you don't have to jump into each one. You could see your progress, see your trophies unlocked, Chivos or whatever. Well, Chivos on Xbox. And it had, uh, it was was just one hub for all of them. And I guess that's maybe that's what they were trying to, they're, they're testing that they plan on doing. That would make sense to have an ad. Yeah, very suspicious, though, man. Um, all right, moving on here. Uh, Atari 2600. Um, how much do you think... Uh, Adam, this one's for you, I guess. Um, how much do you think Call of Duty will increase Game Pass subscriptions? Do you think people who primarily play Call of Duty will adopt Game Pass? I think it will definitely increase. For people that don't plan on buying Game Pass, I mean, uh, Call of Duty games, but I think it's really going to be for those who want to play the older ones, if they keep those multiplayer alive. There are some great ones, World at War and a few of the older ones, the World War II, if they can keep those up for that nostalgia feel. I could see that being very popular with people. It's like, hey, you want to play Call of Duty? So many times people talk, when I'm even playing, they're like, oh, remember when we played this old one? Oh, remember this one map? Yeah, 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 I remember that. Well, whatever. 
and uh, it's, that's it, you move on. But if they're all on there, then you could say, yeah, I want to play. And if you can play from the cloud, if you don't have to waste time installing, and it's just about booting it up and jumping in, I could definitely see that, the benefit, and I see a lot of people jumping in because it's not about just a newer Call of Duty. As we've talked about, there's multiple versions, and there's the zombies. There's different zombies. A lot of people like the Black Ops Zombie uh, 2, which was one of the best ones. Well, there you go. If it's all there on Game Pass, you can play it and don't have to own it. So I, I definitely think that it's going to pull in a huge audience just for the older ones. The new ones, of course, because people don't want to spend money, but the fact that all the old ones are going to be there, at least the way they said it's going to be there, then if, if those multiplayers are still live and work, that's going to be great. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know the answer to this question. Like, I guess if you're like a true duty head, like maybe you will, like maybe it'll raise subscriptions. Um, but then would that also like, make xboxes well, sell better you know? well remember it's not it's not just that it's all the games from activision i'm sure they're gonna dump all their the uh, activision uh, legacy titles and stuff on there just like they did with bethesda they didn't just put fallout you know and skyrim they put all the other ones on there so i think yeah, if, when they have like, it no 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 we're called yeah, the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i still think that'll be a big selling point because it's there and everybody wants to play call of duty whether they like it or not they'll just jump in mm. or at least know that they have access to it you know it, even if they're like not into playing it they're like well you never played it yeah well it's part of my service you know if i want to play it i know i can play it you know if i play it with you sometime yeah i could do it but at least i didn't shell out 70 dollars to fucking play it once or twice with my buddies um, real quick, I want to give a shout out to um, Killer Instinct, aka uh, Reggie Weapon X, for you old Let's school um, Warzone guys. He said, "Yo, yo, yo, where my head's at?" Breaking news: I just got the platinum in Spider Man Two. Let's fucking go! That's what's up, man. Oh yeah! Listen, yeah. listen, listen. He got that platinum. Listen, listen. <laughs> uh, and Blitz says, "I don't think uh, Call of Duty will make a big difference." Because of the Xbox tax. <laughs> now, and that's not a tax. I don't understand why people... Th we talked about this earlier, actually. There was a few other people. Oh, Destin from IGN got in trouble over that shit over the weekend, man. Ah, uh, well, Shouldn't he's got been asking that issue. question, bro. He just, it's just because we know the Switch tax, and it's an actual tax. Because they charge $10 extra for ported third-party games. That's a tax. This, whatever is happening, tax, it's, it's, not a tax. it's not a tax at all. It's just, basically, Xbox tax is just another word for Xbox bias. And as we explained on the last show, that's what I'm saying. Right? That's what I'm saying. It's, that it's, fucking bias for, exactly. for a whole generation of shitty yeah. games, oh. you know? Yeah, and the shitty games that still can come out. Forget about old generation. We had one a few months ago. I mean, it's still happening. So, yeah, but it's, it's not a tax. The wording is wrong, and yeah, I no. hate when I see that because I was like, no, the tax, just like in, in real world terms, it just implies money. You know, you're putting on, you're taxing something onto a, a current product or fee, and then that's not here. It's not, yeah, it's not. Um, but that's just their name for it. By the way, Segway Kings, man. So we're talking about Xbox right now. Um, and I got to I got to I got I got a gripe with something Des, Desden, uh, what Destin said. Destin, right? That's the name. I got, I got, I got, uh, I got beef. Yeah, that's him. That's him. I got beef with somebody. I don't have a beef with him. I got a beef with somebody. He said, um, but we'll, I'll get to that after this question. Uh, Mister Jolly Yellow Nerd, what's going on, brother? All right. Uh, his question is: Starfield appears to have not made the massive impact that some had hoped for. From what I understand, it is a fine game, but it's not a hot ticket system seller. You're right, sir. Um, is there a game coming soon that's currently announced and is being worked on at least that Microsoft may possibly hinge hopes on to become their system seller? Call of Duty. <laughs> I'm, yeah. That's pretty much it. And, and we can't yeah. refer to this one. This one was already done and this one's not officially a new Call of Duty. This is just old ask, shit. Ask something like really quickly, like I'm sure that when Starfield came out, we talked about how those increase in Xbox consoles. No, we, we didn't. We said, I, at least I said it wasn't going to happen because I said it was a niche audience for it. I was we, like, I don't think this is increase in consoles at that time or after the fact. 
at that time. Okay. So, and I'm sure that we said that, yeah, it is a system seller because it sold no, systems. Um, like, Unless I'm having like a weird memory at the moment. I think we're talking about Spider-Man because <laughs> I, I, this thing didn't push Xboxes. That's it. I, I could be wrong about that. I could be wrong. Um, but Okay. Yeah. Um, I vaguely remember a story like that, Brian. I don't. I just don't remember if it's Starfield. Yeah, yeah. The story sounds familiar. I just don't remember if it's Starfield or not. Um. Anyway, I forgot the fucking question. Think about what Brian said. Do they have a do they have a game down the pipeline that oh, yeah, would be a system a seller? They don't have nothing. No, no. There was no. Some, there, yeah, I mean, there's nothing like nothing Starfield big. I remember seeing some stuff that I was like, oh, that looks cool, but like. Oh, I do. There's one. I could say one, but we don't really know. I mean, we know it's in de- development. We just don't know release date. And that Indiana Jones. If that Indiana that Jones shit ain't is, selling those systems, that could Especially be. Especially after that <laughs> shitty fucking movie that came out, nobody no, cares no, no, about no, that. No, 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 no. That's not. It's know? not based off of that movie. And no, it's no, not I'm just saying nobody cares about that property right now. It's tainted now. Two man. fucking bad movies in a row. Like no one cares anymore, man. You know. Yeah, may- maybe Fable, but maybe. What about Avowed, you know? Uh, you know Avowed is going to be kind of same situation. They they scale back. It's it's not going to be a Skyrim thing, but everybody's going to think it's going to be a Skyrim thing, and they'll be disappointed when it's not a Skyrim thing. Go ahead and mark your calendars on that one. Remember when I said that so we can come back and check this episode. Because that's exactly what's going to happen. I, I guarantee everybody's going to be like, oh, it's like Skyrim. No, it's not they said that, and then they they walk that shit backwards, and they're like, "No, we 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 can't do something as big as Skyrim. It's it's going to be like Outer Worlds version, like how Outer Worlds was to That's Starfield. Good. It's it's going to be like that." So I don't know. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm tired of these big open worlds. It's just too many of them. I just want to streamline, streamline, run and gun, <laughs> go in there. You sound like shit. me in 2015, I'm, man. I'm done. I'm yeah, done. You know? There's too many of them. There's too many. Everything is massive. After Valhalla, that, that caused a serious depression <laughs> no, right, for just, me. Just Looking at that map. Like Baldur's Gate did. Like, have it actually be like, don't have 35 buildings that are there for no reason. Here's an idea. If you just want to, like, super compact, like, just do, like, three city blocks but like have every door everything like i could like get into the nitty-gritty of everything and 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 fuck it up like man you know what replay but i mean well you don't have to do it. like Baldur's gate is showing that in terms of replayability so like just make it dense i yeah, think starfield yeah. proof like i don't care if it's an entire galaxy of shit that is just spread out over ten thousand light years i don't give a fuck nobody does that's kind of what we showed what we have showed is make one city like Baldur's Gate that is just super densely packed. People really love that shit. Yeah. Or, or like uh, just a uh, large open areas, environments like the Yakuza games. And you know, it, it's not an open world, but it's a big open area. And there's a bunch to do on every block. Like you just said with the Baldur's Gate, there's always something to do there. You don't have to do this long trek to get to another area just to do one objective. Plenty to do. And it's all running distance. Dude, look so. at Shemdu. Shemdu was just put. The whole game took place in one fairly small town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that's that's fine. Tell us stories like that. Like, there's no reason to that. It would need to leave Night City. Like Night City, even even Night City could have been about ten times smaller. To be real honest with you, it didn't need to be that big. They only made it that big for car driving. But there's no nothing built around the car driving, so it, they both just kind of end up being vestigial and unnecessary. To be real honest, with like can, Tony, I know you love that game. Yeah, can you defend the reason that there needs to be car driving, considering there's not really anything else built around it? Uh, because as a city, you need to drive around. You imagine a, a game that's built in a futuristic city with no cars. That would be weird. Oh you know my god! Man? You know what I mean? Like a futuristic city, like Blade Runner and that kind of shit, where the oh most man, of the no stuff car, is yeah. densely packed oh. in walking distance. Yeah, oh, that's yeah, like no, no one's gonna. That's stu- I, I would hate playing a game like that. You know, Dude, like, man. there's yeah. no reason to drive in Night City. There's it's a city. You have to drive in a city. No, no, you know? no, you don't. Look at we yeah. just said it. You cool the games. You don't drive. Yeah, yeah, but there's you run like, you want, like Cyberpunk. You need that shit to be grand and epic and big. It, you you don't want it to be too like that game. I will 
and remember, I'm saying this as a guy who's tired yeah. of open world games. That game needed to be open world, you know? Like if, absolutely if, you, you get, if you get rid if you get rid of the two missions that have Delamine on it, it's not the same game. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good those are good mm-hmm. missions, you know. Um but but generally No, no not even not even yeah. that. You, yeah. Go ahead. The the remember the there's there's one mission when you're in Delamine and you and you have to drive, and that's one of the craziest fucking scenes in the whole fucking game. Yeah. But Brett, generally speaking, generally, I agree with you. Uh, but there's always exceptions, obviously, you know. But I, generally, I agree with you. Especially, especially in dystopian future games, you could convince me that there's not a lot of cars. Because honestly, that's, I hate to be weird about it, like, it's a very America-centric viewpoint that you need cars. Like, a lot, like most European cities and like, a lot of ideas Night for cities, cities in America, though. Yeah, but even like almost all ideas for future cities and whatnot involve them being walkable, right? Like, so like it, I, I could see it being like Yakuza type thing in the future, right? Like everything's built on top of itself and you're, 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 the whole game takes place in like nine square blocks. Like, again, we're talking about like it could still be open, but does it really, do you really need to drive two minutes to the next destination? No, when there's again, no generally real speaking, yeah, gameplay? generally speaking, I agree with you on that. You can you can make a whole game within a finite space. I agree with that. I mean, that's how games used to be, right? You know. Well, I, that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to give up the idea of open world. It just doesn't need to be unnecessarily huge and empty. Like, I love open world. I love the choice of where to go. But like, like to me, Horizon is not open world, man. Like, it's it's gated off zones of a progressing order. Right, but those are levels. You, but you could literally walk from one end to the other, like continuously, no loading. Like that's oh, we had this discussion before. I'm not trying to go down that road, yeah, but like, you literally can walk from like the t- the top of the map all the way down, no loading yeah, and whatsoever. That, and like, that's my point. But it's that that's what I'm getting at. You can, but it's pointless because the gameplay yeah. is built in such a way that you move from area A to area B to area C. You move, you know, like, oh, no, there's ice there, and you haven't got your cold weather gear. You better go to this other place to get the cold weather gear before you go there. Like That's Zelda. That's, <laughs> that's fucking Yeah, Zelda. I know. Yeah. I know, and that's the thing. That's not truly open world, right? Like, it, it, it has all the, it has a lot of the trappings of open world in the sense of, like, yeah, you can walk from point A to point B, but it, it, you, you don't truly have a choice, and that's kind of the whole point of why open world at one point was big is choice and freedom. And now you have open world with choice and freedom stripped away. And what's the fucking point at that point? That, that, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like why, why even have an open world in horizon? Right? Um, like you don't have box. the choice that's where why. to go. Take, take the box at the, uh, you know, that's why take the box. Yeah. To take the box, but it could have very easily been areas or stages because that's really like, honestly, all that it fucking is. Oh, I agree so with you. We now well, have yeah, well, Horizon, I give you that. Um, I, again, I'm just pushing back on Night City. But again, generally, yeah, I agree with your assessment here. Yeah. Well, Unless I, it's God of War. God of War does yeah, not need to be open fucking world. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, most most modern games don't need to be open world. I agree. And the open world in in such a terrible way. Like, it's a, it's a derivative way with all the choice, the freedom, and the fun taken out of it. It makes other games not really able to check the box where you have choice and freedom and fun, right? Like that's that's one of the things I love about the Soul series. A lot of times they're like, you can you have to get these areas, you have to ring these two bells, but like how you go about it, man, that's that's <laughs> fucking up. that's up to you. And what did they do with it, their last game? Made, made it open, open world. world. <laughs> yeah, but they they did it in a way where they're like. You want to skip to the poison swamp of death? Go right the fuck ahead. You want to skip this entire zone? You can do that. There's secrets everywhere. Like that's the way to do it. Like there is a, no point where they they it, in that game where they held me and said you have to do this thing. Well, I, I, there probably actually is a couple points in that where it does funnel you in, but for the most part, you can skip just about any zone. It's it, the game is fucking crazy, man. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, Xbox doesn't have anything to answer the original question. Is that where we started? Yep. 
And we went down All a right. deep rabbit hole, didn't we? Oh, well, dude, I felt like we had to vamp. It was—it feels like a light. No, 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 we, yeah, no, we're not, we're not vamping. We're, we're good on questions. Um, but I did want to uh, talk about De- what Destin said on Twitter because this annoyed me. Um, I'm gonna read this specific part. Who's Destin? Uh, he's he's a, a guy from he's IGN. IGN guy. Hates. Yeah, that everybody hates, even though he's like oh, okay. the most milk toast dude out there. Um, I'm gonna read this <laughs> statement. Please let me finish because I know somebody will want to jump in the middle of it. I'm going to read this statement. Yeah, I'm going to read this statement. And I have to tell myself, Tony, you got to read this whole thing. Don't stop halfway and start groaning. Um, I believe the Xbox brand is about to have an incredible 2024, and it feels like it's just the tip of the iceberg. I've always seen the path to further success for Xbox. It feels like they have all the pieces set up exactly right now, and once they hit their stripe, it will be undeniable. How many times have we have fucking heard that for the past 10 years? That's just his yeah. opinion. Are you fucking kidding? Cool. No, no. We've heard the same shit from everybody for the last 10 years. Every This is the year of Xbox. This is the year of Xbox. This is the year of Xbox. Wait till whoa. E3. Wait till whoa. E3. Whoa. Wait till E3. Whoa, 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 Every whoa. fuck for 10 years. Well, like, the, only way on, would, the only way it would apply more to this is because of this acquisition. That's the only thing I could think of, and they have more developers to I'm work on projects. I'm tired of hearing this shit. Whoa, 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 of yeah. course, right. we haven't seen anything materialize, but... This actually has valid claim yeah, just for the money that they spent. Line. How am I out of line? We've, you, so you're telling me we haven't heard this exact same thing no, for the past have, 10 years. But I have, you, are gonna, you are letting that exhaustion fucking yeah. blind you, right? Like, yeah. I am not saying I'm that Xbox is going to come out yeah. here swinging, but you cannot objectively look at where they are placed and positioned in the market and say that it is not the best that it has been in a fucking decade. I right? not, not I, no, I'm saying because I've heard this shit for 10 fucking years. I know, so I get I, that. So, no, I so get fuck that. It, no. right, just because you've heard that yeah. shit. Look, if you look at it from that point of view, if they ever did turn around, you would never see it becoming because you would have heard this shit for X amount of years, right? Like that logic doesn't fucking hold up to scrutiny. And I get that you've heard that a lot, but tell me that this isn't a better position than they were in when they were fucking pushing a broken half system when they pulled the connect out of it or when they had completely lost all good grades. Like they, they, they are at least on an upswing. You have to fucking admit that they're in a better place now than they've ever been. That statement is more warranted now than it has been in like 10 fucking years. Now I'm not saying I want to be very clear. I am not saying they are the fucking dark horse that is going to come in and this is going to be the, the the X amount of years for Xbox. And here we fucking go. Let's do this. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is they look the best that they have in, in, in fucking recent memory. And I don't think that you can refute that. I but don't all think this, that. The IPs I, they own that. I've heard this 25 times. That, that same oh. argument. Yeah. That same argument, Brett, that you're even that nuance that you're bringing in. That's been uh that has been too in the past couple of years. That too many so times. They, 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 they acquired Ninja Theory. Oh, this is you know now they got you know a double A studio that produces games all the time. They've released Bleeding Edge and that's it. And now they they acquired the uh, oh they got Bethesda. This is the best time ever. Uh, and look and look how that went. Yeah. Yeah. They got Obsidian, and there's like, oh, now this we got our follow up. But now, yes, now you can say it again. They, they made they, another they, acquisition. They progressively they better. Yeah. What's your point? But they haven't, but it hasn't shown anything. Nothing has like come the, the of whole. It. You know, they, the whole point is the whole point. The whole point. The whole. The whole point of the. The whole point of what was being mentioned here is saying is Destin is saying, oh, 2024 is the year because this is where everything's going to drop, and what we're saying is we we say this every year. Let's just let's just let it just. Be the year whenever it is, because if you could, if you're gonna keep saying it, the track record just doesn't isn't there. Yeah. And then, oh, now now people want to take credits. Like, oh, I told you, 2024 was gonna be the year, motherfucker. We've been hearing this for a decade, mm-hmm. and that's and that's what I'm saying. It's not a bang. It's a whimper, man. Like, it's there is not there there is no point in which the beat is going or the the beat is gonna drop. Right, like it is a slow build. They are year over year doing a little bit better each year. There's not going to be this giant fucking springboard, right? Microsoft is not going to go fucking super sane. And if you're waiting for that, then you're going to miss the fact that they are in a better Sorry, position Jasmine. now than they've been. <laughs> oh my God. I'm tired right? of like, shit. This is, uh, but 
I, I feel like the fact that like people are waiting for that shit to uh, waiting for Microsoft to go Super Saiyan like obscures the fact that like they're doing pretty good. They're not. They're not mm. doing bad. They're clawing their way up slowly. It's not pretty. They're, it's not <laughs> triumphant. There's not going to be that fucking moment though. There's just going to be a moment where and, you look up and you're like, "Hey, actually, it's not treating me too bad." No, I, here's the thing, Brad. I, 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 I think Brad, it will Brad, never Brad, get Adam, real quick, I want to jump in. Brad, I don't, I don't dispute what you're saying, man. But you know where I'm coming from, bro. It's, I'm, I'm tired. I know, of, I yeah. know where you're frustrated. I, I, from yeah, because yeah. yeah, because you, you're not wrong in anything you said. I, I would agree with you. Most, uh, you know, I want to agree with you. But I'm tired of hearing this same fucking shit every time, you know? And my thing is, is like, it, we haven't seen any of the fruits of the but, of any of these acquisitions. None of thing. We, we saw Starfield. That was supposed to be the game. And it can't. And it hit like a thud. That You know, we don't see this reflected in console sales. We don't see this reflected in game I mean, sales. But we're seeing we, games we, come we, out, we, whether they're good or bad. We, there we, are we, stuff we, coming. Yeah. But it's not High doing anything, rush man. and stuff. Yeah, go ahead, Brad. What's up? Not right. And that's yeah. That's right. what I'm telling you. I I'm sitting there. I'm like, I how many? I I've, I've I've been talking to you about this. I'm like, look at all these games on Xbox that I want to play, and look at all that I'm getting for free, and look at like what a generalized good experience it's been. Like, look how it's become a viable gaming platform, and I actually have things to play before I even buy games. Like we've talked about. I know, this. and this is what I right? like. This you, is what I. This, that, that's what. Yeah. Whoa, 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 let me finish. Mm-hmm. Let me okay, finish. Right. And then I got to. You yourself yeah. are just as guilty of waiting for that Super Saiyan moment. Just on the other side of things, they're saying hurrah, hurrah. This is gonna be a big fucking Super Saiyan moment, and you're sitting there saying uh, it's not valid until they have that big Super yeah, Saiyan moment. I like, am. Here's I'm, a clue, I'm not, motherfucker. I'm not, I'm not, it has I'm become a valid that. platform. I have hundreds of dollars of, of fucking games that I haven't had to buy. I am a satisfied customer. It's, I'm not fucking Bigfoot. We exist, right? Like, and I get real sick of this shit because it sounds like nobody's willing to justify or or validate the fact that this is a viable fucking platform. With a good customer experience, right? Like I'm not, then, and I'm not even talking about fucking Nintendo here. It has nothing to do with numbers. Yeah, all yeah, the the is it not reflected in the console sales, customer? man? That, that's yeah, and that's what if you wouldn't if you would listen instead of fucking interrupting. That's exactly what I was just fucking saying. Okay, is I'm not talking about numbers. I'm not talking about number of units sold. I am talking about customer experience, which is a prelude to any of those fucking things. I don't give a shit about numbers sold if they're treating their customers like shit. There's nothing on the fucking table, right? We can't we can't muddy those waters if we're talking strictly about, hey, here's the things that they're offering. That's what I'm talking about, right? And you So like what when, when I'm talking about like them providing a good customer experience, why is your counter to that? Well, they haven't sold that many numbers. Like, what, what, what the fuck does that have to do with anything other than trying to undermine my argument that they're providing a decent fucking service, man? They are. Well, the service they're, part they're, is they doing are, well. Yeah, no, it's I'm not disputing the service part. It's just not translating well. to sales, man. You know, that's all I'm saying. It, and here's it, the thing. It, 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 and I know. Okay, Brett. Yes, you're getting a lot of games. I'm. I'm not undermining any of that. I think it's fantastic. Most of those games you could play on PlayStation, man. So you, it's like you're not even getting, games, you don't have you're to, not even getting you don't unique have to experience. Buy them. Yeah, like yes, you get High Five Rush, you get Starfield Cool, no one's denying that. But most of those games are on PlayStation. You're not really getting a unique experience on Xbox, you know? Well, I mean there's You're fact, getting yeah, a unique wallet, experience in your wallet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not paying seventy dollars a pop form. That's pretty fucking unique. Yeah, but again, it's not translating to console sales, man. You know, it is subscri- it's translating to subscriptions, so. though. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't get ahead, this, Carl, this whole ahead. discussion. It's like we're talking about, we're talking about uh, first party games, and somehow we're talking about Brett's love for Game Pass. Like, what does that have to do with anything? No, we're not just talking about that's the that's thing. It's not just about first party games. It's the, the, que- the, the but that's the question. That's the question that was asked. And somehow we got into this whole. Well, well, I, I love fucking. I love my Xbox. And yeah, no one's denying that. No one's no. taking that away from me. Uh, I, 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 what I don't understand with because I agree, there's really nothing when it comes to first party stuff that's coming out. And By if the way, we're not out, getting into. I don't really care about it. You know, I don't really care about a lot of this shit. Starfield stuff. It didn't do anything for me. It didn't move the needle. Hi Fi Rush is the only one that really got me playing, and I enjoyed it. But that was it. So when they say, "Oh well, this could be the year that changes it." 
I think that does apply every year only because they keep evolving. They keep adding more. Now, if it was just the same studios, I'm like giving them the benefit of the doubt. One, just imagine one studio that came out with a flop, another studio, another game's coming out. Well, we can give them a, this could be their year. And then it flops. Well, you know what? They got some new developer. This could be their year. Another new guy came to help them. Could be. This is different though. They're spending a lot of money to make this better. They're doing everything possible to the point that the FTC and other organizations are trying to stop them because it's scary of what they're trying to do so if this year i would go on the flip side if this year is a bust for them then it's never going to happen this is it they have hit the top they've spent ridiculous money for uh, the number one ip in the world when it comes to call of duty and if they can't get this a, a full flex and i don't want to hear about this version this version was already produced in the bag before that that purchase was done they had no say this when the next one comes and is they it? put the time and the money yeah if this that next one fucking bombs and we start seeing a significant drop off in player install and interest and no one buying battle pads and shit then yes they've been cursed somebody cursed this company xbox and they tax will, <laughs> Yeah, I stop. See, you're feeding with the tax. Give it a new name. Come on, be original with this. Fuck Xbox, the tax. You Xbox know, we'll, bias. There you go. Let's go back to hey, what it's it was originally called. Exactly. It's Xbox bias. Then we'll go with that. But you know what? Then it's valid because this shit keeps failing. It, it, we can't give it a pass. No one here is giving a cat. Well, that's a half ass game, but you know what? It's good enough. No, I, it's not. It's not. It's not good enough. So, but the truth is, I don't think anything at this point. I think that they've put such a stench in the market that no matter what comes out people are still going to give it the shady look no matter what it is they're still going to give a shady yeah, look it's still that. microsoft yeah and it's it I don't, I don't see that ever going away i think it will always be the two separate just like nike and reebok i like nike but reebok had the pump yeah but it's a gimmick you know it's always going to be tarnished so it's the same thing i don't see them ever getting out of this if you're in it you're in it and for like brett's reasons game pass i see that as, as a plus it helps me with my kids i don't have to buy them every damn game that comes out they see it they play it they don't like it i didn't spend any extra money for it that's fine with me yeah and that could be it that could be just what microsoft becomes it's known as that gaming service do they come up with exclusives yeah are they good no but they try and uh that's it and we have competition let's be honest and it will be and that's it because the end result is even worse we don't want one big publisher that's we don't true. want one yeah. sony we don't want that and who is going to fill this we've seen amazon come in, in the chat that fell either. apart we've seen so many others come and go no one seems to do it and where's, so gear, it's a, where's gear six man where's gear that's six? what i'm hoping for i would but that's me i i can't say that's a, a system seller because i don't know the only people that i know play are the same fucking people that are in their 40s and minds that still play hell look at me i'm still playing gears 4 horde mode every weekend it's like why you know it's just we like it we enjoy it that's our thing gear six will I, come we'll play I, that i played it i played it with uh with a buddy of mine and he just led me for dead Damn. See, th th I told you he's not a good guy. That yeah. dude is not. A good By the guy. way, Adam, question for you um, from Kishak: Should we applaud my, uh, Xbox for trying? Uh, anybody should be applauded for trying, whether Xbox or your buddy that's at uh, his job and he's trying to get promoted up and he's doing extra over T. You know, everybody. If you're ever trying, you can't be knocked for trying in any industry. We all know this. That that's a no brainer. If you're not trying is when it becomes a problem when you're stagnant when you're not doing anything then you shit on them you're like hey they came out with this shitty game all right next year they said they're going to make it better guess what it's the same shitty game with dlc they didn't add anything they just put dlc they new features are shit you have to pay for on top of it but no we're not getting that they are trying when they stop and this shit isn't working then it's a serious problem but i think Man. either way they still got that stench on it and that stench isn't going to go away anytime soon I, I don't know, you know, I like 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 I mentioned earlier with the whole Destin thing. It's like we say this thing every year, but I sure as hell Wait hope three. One, yeah, I sure as hell hope that one of these years it, it becomes that because yes. we're seeing the, the the whole the whole issue with this is Microsoft is is the worst at this. Nintendo is the best at this at just releasing first party titles that change the world that that people gravitate towards that are become zeitgeist games and all that stuff. But, and Microsoft is so bad at it that they, that they allow for fucking Sony 
to release two two first party games per year and people are fucking satisfied or a fucking remaster yeah. the last yeah. of us yeah. and people are fucking satisfied and that and it, it that's the whole thing with competition man so fucking microsoft yeah, I, well below I their keep, weight and like, i keep totally thinking amazing. about it i keep thinking about it with this of the 360 and why was that so special what was so special it wasn't really a game you can't say oh well halo yeah that was all right but then call of duty was much better and that came out during that time also and then gears is still it's a shooter running gun it's fun and everything but it's still not for everybody what was it that made it special that the other ones weren't doing at the time it was cheaper than playstation no nope wasn't that it wasn't even that it was the multiplayer experience it had online that online experience was completely unique and different and that's what pulled people in. That's the first, you had casuals, not PC, you could already do this, but people at home grabbing a headset and talking to family and friends in their homes and playing games with them. That's what really sold that thing. But then when you get the PS4 coming out and it can now do it integrated with no issues and it didn't, no lag and problems, and it's like, oh wow, this does that as well. And then they wound up getting the Call of Duty license and that was the big game to play for that type of experience. And then it moves on. So 360 really wasn't that special besides the online integrated experience. And I think that's the problem. Is it did they ever really have any standout games? They have a, a racing game, a first person shooter, a third person shooter. Gears and that's was pretty, it. pretty monumental, it's, man, back then. It's yeah. no, oh, it, it's great. It was groundbreaking for a bunch of things. Yeah. The roadie run, the blood and all the stuff. Roadie but run. It, it, yeah, roadie run. But it didn't it, it didn't pull it it didn't push it skiers four or five it's not one of those franchises like a call of duty that everybody runs out and buys forget about console selling just a must-have game if someone was to say what is a must-have game for xbox i can't tell them i don't have one I and mean, yeah it's it's, it's it's subjective what what are you into what do you like but i can't tell you one as opposed to for a playstation what's a must-have game well fucking who doesn't like spider-man spider-man that's it. Well, well, oh, well, they got yeah. Well, God of War, you know that experience. Big burly guy, you know, fighting with a family. Good story with his kid and all stuff. You can relate. People relate. Yeah. This is good. All right, you oh. can't relate. You don't like the kid, but you know what? It's still it's a great story. It's, it's a it's great. My God of War. It's, yeah, yeah, there you yeah, go. It's not your God. God of War. The franchise people like it. You know. Um. Anyway, like the old God of War franchise. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, Brian, do you have any thoughts on this? Um, can you reread read his quote? Um, oh, because, Destins, right? Mm, Fuck, I gotta pull yeah. it up again. Uh, yeah, I'm still that. trying to I figure mean, out why. Again, he, I'll read the quote, but remember, you, you, you've heard it. No, I, again, I just personally had to bring up, I'm like, oh, how many times? We, we've been saying this, we've been hearing a version of this since Throwdown has been around, man. No, um, no, but I'm just trying to figure out. You said there was hate. Um, oh, yeah, he, he, said, got, he got so a bunch just, of hate. He got a, that's what oh, always but, gets hate, though. He always gets hate. But, but what was... I don't... He didn't say that they're oh, better no, he, than everyone. He, they're going to be the get, best. He didn't get hate. I don't, he, I don't, he didn't get hate for that quote. He got hate because he questioned what the Xbox tax was. And he debunked it rightfully because, you know... It, here's like, if you want to call it the bias, I get it. But there is no Xbox X, and he's trying to explain that, and the motherfuckers came at him, you know. Um, but Brian, I'll read the quote for you again. Um, I believe the Xbox brand is about to have an incredible 2024, and it feels like it's just the tip of the iceberg. I've always seen the path to further success for Xbox. I feel like they have all the pieces set up uh, exactly right now, and once they really hit their stride, it will be undeniable. Well, what's undeniable is something that he said. He is a fanboy. He, he's openly said that he loves Xbox. It's his preferred console. He has a PlayStation, loves PlayStation, loves doing all that. But remember, he that. was also yeah. on, po- nothing wrong with that. He was on Podcast Unlocked. Maybe he's still on that, the IGN Xbox podcast. So I don't, th- this is his opinion. He wants to think positive about something like that. That's fine. Now, if he was to come out and said that there's no competition, that everybody else is going to fail, it's dumb, 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 they're the best of the best, of the best, then yeah, there's arguments here. But no, it sounds like he's just giving his thoughts. Yeah. Like, okay, hey, again, I think. Again, it's the hate be- didn't come because of that. It came because of his video about Xbox tax. Um, I just want to call that the, that quote because I've been hearing it for a fucking decade. And wait, Brian, what, what do you think of it? I just think it's a again, fairly milk milk toast quote. It's just saying that, yeah, Xbox are in a good position to do well. It's like, well, yeah, they should be. I mean, they spent 
this whole generation like building up to well building stuff in general so yeah they should be in a good place to do well whether or not they will or won't it's to be seen yeah. but again as as tony has said like the xbox bias going on who knows what they'll do but that'll never yeah. go away i just that's I one thing i never see going away i don't think they will get a mass appeal hit like what sony has with stuff like spider-man but then again do they need to have a mass appeal hit or are people just wanting them to have a mass appeal hit so that they can say oh yeah they're now com- um on the same playing field as sony well, if you ask Phil, then it's the latter. Then that's it. I guess it depends on if you're asking us or you're asking like what the general yeah. public. Because his his whole thing is it's all about the subs and people playing engagement. If they're joining the, and he sees engagement as subscribers, if that number is going up, it, whether it's third party or first party that's on that service, it doesn't matter. They're subbing, so then that's all plus. The, the, these games come out, mean maybe they're not on that level of Spider Man or those, but they're like. Eh, good it's still it's a new ip exclusive to your platform excluding pc and it's free you didn't buy it so that they see that all as plus remember that's what he got shitted on it was like oh i'm never gonna we're never gonna be playstation we're never gonna and they're like what how dare you say that he's like what i'm just being honest i'm not looking at that that's not my goal post right now yeah all right that was a good discussion uh the last two questions of the night from richard bailey jr of the coalition i've heard of him all right. Um, first question is: Did did anyone on Throwdown take advantage of any Black Friday deals? He, well, I I don't know if it's gaming related, but I got a I got a new laptop. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Well, you can play games on it, you know. So and it's got ray tracing. It's got ray tracing. Ray tracing. I got tons. Uh, tons. <laughs> I got a pool table coming. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. Really? So, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it, it wasn't just Black Friday. It's like they dropped the price. Yeah, and I was like, oh, okay. And then I waited and see if they were going to drop it again. They didn't, it's, but they already took a big drop. So is like, it a normal right. pool table or is it? No, it's, it's a 50, it's a 55 pool. inch. No, no, right? Pocket. I can ready play that now. So I can, like, oh, <laughs> right? I'm off camera for a reason. You know? No, um, yeah. <laughs> You know, but it's it's something that it, it's it got great reviews. It's awesome. It's uh, got foldable legs so that way you could easily store it. But it's a good size and it has official ball types and the, the nice felt. Uh, it's good quality. I, I watched a bunch of reviews and read reviews. A lot of people love it. And it was a good price. So I was like, all right, I'm going to get this. It'll be for the family for Christmas. I'm not telling anybody. So once it shows up, it's going to be like, oh, we got a little, something a little extra. And boom, let's play some pool. Nice. Um, not gaming related, but and this is kind of weird for me because I don't really buy um physical books. I just read them on Kindle. But um, they were having like a two, three for two sale on Amazon, and I really like the way those new like Elric book looks. So I'm like, I'm gonna buy those. So I bought them. You know, I saved some money. Um, and just to tie it into gaming, um, Elric Wait, a physical you know, yeah, book, physical, phys- yeah, physical, physical, actual books. You know, you touching paper again? Yeah, man. What's up with that, man? I still got paper with, cuts and chemicals. Yeah. Yo, um, man, you but, got papers? Yeah, no, yeah. but it, it does have a lot of nice illustrations. I'm like, I want that. I want those illustrations. Yeah. You know, mm, pretty pictures. Um, pretty to pretty tie pretty. it into uh, gaming, um, The Witcher, you know, pretty much ripped off everything from Elric. So there you go. Um, K- Kishak says, uh, honestly, Black Friday this year felt weak. I don't know. I didn't really. I, I think there's it was a stronger of, this year than of, last year. This, you know. There's a lot of suspect deals, what I call, where in other words, they say it's a sale and it's not really a sale. Did you see, Manny, did you see that one video this- from Target or whatever it was? It was Target. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> they, had, they had the Black t- Friday like tag, right? And then they pull it off and then it said sale, the same fucking price. You no, know? no, there was a t- there was a but my buddy got a PlayStation Five for a hundred dollars less. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that was happening. Yeah, that that was a sale. He was like, I didn't wasn't in the market for it, but for this price, I I'd buy it. that for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know. I mean, I got fi- I got fi- I got five dollars five dollars off of a off of mine for for buying off a of GameStop. Nice oh, power to the player. Yeah, power to the player. Power to the player. Like us. Yeah. Um, so Manny, you you got five dollars off. I guess that's your thing. 
No, I mean, I got yeah. like, you know, because I still have the, the, you know, the power up rewards thing. And yeah. if you spend a certain amount of money on things, they give you money off. So they already applied it on there. So I got a couple of pretty much got like the tax off. Nice. <laughs> um, or a little bit of the, so was a little, you know, that's good. Not bad. Yeah. Brett, did you indulge oh, in any Black Friday-ness this year? No, nah, it's it's slow tattoo season always around this time of year. Oh shit. Which is weird. Do we think this is the time they want to do it? They was like, I gotta prove to Gina I love her. Put this hard tattoo, please. Damn Gina, well, I want this tattoo from Brett. I promise I won't sleep with your sister again. I mean there's honestly just there's not much that I I really need. Like I can't I can't think of anything that like uh, maybe like an ice maker or something like that, but like at a certain point you're just looking for shit to buy, and I'm like, no, you need to do that. <laughs> I, I black bread. Remember our last conversation? Like somebody asked us, like, yeah, it was last week. They asked us, like, what present do you want from Santa? And you and I kind of the same answer is like, yeah, we just buy shit when we need it, man. You know, um, like the the Elric things that kind of just hit me out of nowhere. But generally, I was like, eh, I have all this shit already. I'm good. You know. Like I'm, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I'm a day one was person. There you was know? something. There was something. What was it? You posted in chat. You were like with the eyes and stuff. I was like, oh, I don't need it, but I should get it. What was that? Probably Steam Deck OLED. <laughs> no, no, it was something else. It was something else. No, it was something else because you were like, oh, and then you were gonna get a credit card for because you get a discount. Oh yeah, the MacBook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, MacBook. But I do. Matter. But I want that. I've been. But I. But I, but I have a plan for that. I have a plan for oh. that. I'm waiting, you know? Oh. Um, but yeah, Brad, I'm generally with you. I'm like, I, but, but here's the thing. I, not gaming related whatsoever, but it, you've piqued my curiosity. Why is this slow tattoo season? Mr. Murdoch. He doesn't even know. Why That's is, just why he's why why Yeah, you said because this was slow that, tattoo yeah. season. Yeah. Yeah, why is that? Because everybody's spending their money on other shit. Like, tattoos fall in this very uh, weird place of like somewhere between a commodity and a luxury. So when you have things like holidays where people spend money on decorations or gifts or things like that, like that same ancillary budget that would go to tattoos tends to go towards gifts and food and things like that. So so, so what is the season then? Yeah, if this is not that. the season. Yeah, what's Tax what season. is Ooh, Tax season? ooh, that makes sense. Motherfuckers yeah, got extra money, money. And shit. Yeah. 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 All right, I'm going to get right. this tattoo. I'm going to show Gina I love her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't, and then don't that get fucking me wrong. bitch it's, cheats it's, on you and leaves. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't get me wrong. People get tattoos year round. It's not, it's not like it just dries up and we don't have people getting them, but like it's definitely busier. Uh, in like, I want to say april may june july is like the fucking busiest because everybody's you know wearing less they want to show their tattoos off even though they should really be kind of getting them in the winter time anyway um and yeah november december january is kind of the slower portion so um it's it's it kind of ironic and it sucks because like it always slows down when i need money and like it slows down for the exact reason that I do need money. Yeah, because yeah, like, of the holiday, yeah. Well, yeah, I need to buy, I need to buy fucking food for Thanksgiving, and I gotta buy some Christmas stuff, and, you know, the weather gets warmer, or weather gets colder, so the bills go up, I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, the utilities, I'm not sure if anybody else's utilities are like, fucking Oh, yeah, my utilities. Did you do the, the plan, the three-month plan? That's what I switched to. No, ours, ours went to, like, a metered time, so basically it was like, well, it's real simple. Just don't use electricity between like noon and eight. You're like, oh yeah, oh. Sure. cool, yeah, that'll be wow. easy. I'll just I'll black out every. Fuck you guys. Um, oh, no. And you know, just groceries like man, every, everything's expensive. So, um, again, again, it's not one of those like, well, I can't afford to do anything on Black Friday. It's like it's just one of those like, I don't have enough extra money that I'm just trying to find ways to spend it. And I can't really think of anything I particularly want or or need. If anybody can suggest something, sure. Cyber Monday is you know yep tomorrow. So like I'm down, but like I just I just bought a laptop. Or now, <laughs> I like I, I, you can ask Tony. I just I got a pretty pretty yeah. fucking good laptop really good. actually. Really good, really good. Um, so, all right, Brian. Did I know you guys have Black Friday over there too? Did you get anything? No. 
I'm I'm kind of like Brett, where I don't think there's anything I really need at the moment. Um, most <clears> most <throat> of the games I'm looking forward to, just not down price enough yet. So I was like, yep, I'll just wait. Um, tech wise, again, I have my PC, have my TV, have my PS5. So I'm good. So nothing. Cool. Black um, Friday is kind of like a weird thing now. It's like, there's no need for it anymore. I think it's just like. Uh, well, at least we're not hearing of the crazy riots at stores. Yeah, Remember when that was a thing? A uh, uh, Brian, perfect kind of segue to the next question: um, Cyber Monday, because I do feel that Cyber Monday it makes no fucking sense anymore. Right? Think about it like this: right back in the day, Black Friday, you go to the store to buy things, and Cyber Monday is the digital version of that, right? But Black yeah. Friday is. Now, just on, done online. The fuck are we doing? It's just trigger you know? words now. That's all it is. Yeah. It's just trigger words. They're um, like, come on, y'all. This is the deal day. Come on. You know day. But yeah. it, no, it's very intuitive. Black Friday refers to three days. I mean, I don't, I don't know why you can't understand Friday means three days, Tony. It's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, 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 it means four days, man. Right? <laughs> shoot. To oh, I know. It, yeah. I have I have some that say Black Week. They don't even yeah. say Black well, Friday. They say Black Week, <laughs> right? Yeah. Why they got me black, right? <laughs> they they're like <laughs> every it's <laughs> every week. <laughs> I'm gonna say it tomorrow with the stupidity of this statement. Black Friday starts on Thursday now. Uh huh. Cyber Monday started on Saturday for some sites. I got some emails. It was like, I oh yeah, Cyber it, Monday early. I I was converting my Black Friday pages to cyber monday so yes and yes your boy did work all weekend <laughs> for you for you for you guys for the fucking deals you know oh uh, speaking of getting your money for season, you yeah <laughs> go ahead brett what happened so speaking of the season where you get your money this mm -hmm. is your time it kind of is man i, I was with my mom the, this whole weekend and shit and then I, like i was uh, today i was like man i don't fucking take the bus and i was like tony you made a lot of money you you know extra money so it was tiny and a half take a fucking uber back so i did you know it was great like oh yeah i made extra money this weekend um anyway so yeah is anybody gonna indulge cyber monday same answer you know probably mm -hmm. not um but we'll see you know I don't know. I mean, there's nothing really I've been shopping at the bit for, to be honest. Yeah, yeah so, I'm good. No, I'm good. Know. I mean, I, and I'm, honestly, I'm so ready it, to build my my VR room with treadmill and vest. And happy you, know, you know what? I, I I was thinking about that treadmill also the the Pelican one, and they also do the the bike and stuff. But they 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 don't really explain the pricing because I know it's all about subscription services. How much is that subscription? But it sounds great. You know, you have a screen, there's a whole team of people there. You, it's as if you're in the room with them, whether you're running on a or, you know, riding a bike, doing a spin class. Those, those sound great. Yeah, but uh, I'm good, you know. Um, all right, that's going to do it for us, man, for tonight. So, yes, a couple of show notes. So um, we will be back on Thursday, obviously, and that's going to be the last normal show of the year because after that, we're gonna have the the game of the, the game awards stream slash roast. Then a week after that will be the um, you know the year end special, um, and then after that we'll have uh, the AMA special. And I'll close us out. We'll take two breaks, two weeks off, like we usually do, and come back for another year, man. Um, as far as plugs, uh, we will be coming back to you with the Invincible podcast tomorrow night. Uh, that'll be me, Brett, Dana. Carlos, uh, maybe Chris, you know, we'll see about that. It'll be dope. And uh, Brett, what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the episode right before we do the podcast or something fresh. I haven't seen it yet. You know, um, I know what happens, obviously. By the way, I'm so glad I, I read those fucking comics. Motherfuckers are spoiling shit on Twitter, you know? So I was like, yes. yeah, and you don't even go on Twitter. So you're good. You're fine. You know? Um, but yeah, invincible, the, the, the greatest, Podcast in the universe is coming back, people. And then we're taking a break for like fucking a year, probably. Till the That's next crazy. Like, that is man. so crazy. Because, it's because of the writer strike, you know? Is it? I thought this was already done in the can, though, because it was so long ago. Remember, this was supposed to come out almost earlier this year, yeah. but they put it on hold. And it's oh, both. Yeah, it was a, the actors and writer strike, all that shit hit at the same time. So, but, so you're saying it's not even done? 
I don't know. Like they, they, they used to because that's what I you know? I thought it was just like the boys. The boys they said it has been finished yeah. and that they just didn't want to have it out for the strikes of, and then now they didn't want to have it out to bump in with Gen V and it wanted to bump into Invincibles. Oh, they, so they had to, they had to space it. So it's got pushed so far back now. Yeah, because everything was bumping into each other. I don't know. But yeah, so that's what I, go, I got going on over there. That's on the Coalition, by the way, coalition.com uh, with a K, um, YouTube channel as well, you know. Um, and speak by other mm-hmm. YouTube podcasts, Adam, what's going on with iMegans? Uh, we, uh, myself and Rich and Carlos, we broke down and discussed and gave our opinions of the whole season eight, final season for Fear the Walking Dead, that hot garbage of a season should have never happened. Damn. We talk about why it should have never happened. I think... Uh, Rich gave it a very colorful description over on YouTube, more than what I did for the streaming version of the, I mean, the, the, the podcast version. So if you're interested in hearing that and what we had to say, you can check it out. And uh, we will be back. That's on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. But we'll be back in February, t- February 25th. That is the release date for Rick and Michonne. Nice. So we'll see if that can uh, take off. We will see. All right, people, we're done here, so make sure you follow through on Twitch and Twitter. Join the Discord where the conversations and the rumors are always uh, popping. You can also find us on any podcast app by searching for Throwdown Show. That's two words, Throwdown Show. Throwdownshow.com to listen to past episodes. And if you have been watching us on the YouTubes and enjoyed our videos, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of when our premieres go live. And we will probably start doing the simulcasting uh next year people so stay tuned for that you know um it'll be good we'll be all over the place thank you twitch for releasing that um but yeah links to everything down below once again i was your host tony polanco and tonight is joined by emilio lopez like mussolini or kennedy i'm the cult of personality carlos romero i can't follow that up Peace. <laughs> Adam Vale. I get piggyback off that. That was my Black Friday gift. We got CM Punk back in WWE. There you oh. go. It, was, it came cheap. There yep, you go, cheap man. for me. Brett Murdoch. It's been real, people. And Brian Monjoma. It's hard to believe that the same company that published the Rise of Kong game also published a very bad Walking Dead game. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, they also did that uh, fighting game, that Nickelodeon one that just came With out. That the same shit? Yeah, that's them too. Really? Oh, wow. All right. The more you know. Anyway, man, we're out of here. We'll see you on Thursday. Later. Peace. Later. Yeah. I'm seeing on Green Man.